This afternoon's lecture was sponsored by the Rotary International Staff Society and Rotary's Pride Network. Greg Baird is a national lecturer on the LGBTQ civil rights and equality. He is a storyteller, a writer, a filmmaker. Greg has dedicated following of folks on his social media, following his life, his work with the LGBTQ activism, and his own LGBTQ history facts that he shares. He is a native of Northern Michigan and currently calls Chicago his home. Greg has been an activist and a speaker for the LGBTQ civil rights for more than 27 years. His legacy is to help bring together communities to be a more accepting place for everyone, regardless of your religion, race, ethnicity, sex, disability, gender identity, expression, or sexual orientation. In 2008, Greg was the executive producer of a documentary about a gay hate murder of University of Wyoming college student, Matthew Shepard. On October 12th of this year, it will be 20 years since the hate crime that took Matt's life. Greg often shares his program, which he did with us here in this auditorium in 2014, about Matthew Shepard, and he also does that program for students performing in the Laramie Project. Matt's parents, Dennis and Judy Shepard, are very good friends of his, and also mentors to him. In fact, the reason he's with us today is because I bumped into him at an event with Judy Shepard, and he volunteered to come back to share with us. He is acknowledged for his contribution in the Dr. Ruth Westheimer book on her guide to college life. Greg was featured in the 2015 documentary film titled Fish Out of Water, and he'll be in a new documentary earlier next year titled The Three Metamorphoses. He was interviewed last year in Orlando for an upcoming documentary on the Pulse nightclub shooting that happened over two years ago on June 12, 2016. He has also filmed and edited a short memorial film about Pulse nightclub that we'll get to see later today. Greg is known nationally for his work on the issues of bullying, hate crimes, inclusion, and acceptance. He makes his mission helping people of all ages discover their legacy and lead a positive mark on our community. His work every day to help people find the best in themselves and others. He continues his passion to reach other communities across the USA. It's our great pleasure to please welcome Greg Baird. Wow, and what a nice introduction. I actually kind of wrote that though, so I appreciate all of you being here. It's a joy, and some people that I've met have come a little ways, so thank you so much. I don't usually hide behind here very long. I, I wander a lot. I told Steve in about 10, 15 minutes, I'll probably be out in the hallway because I tend to <laughs> go around a lot. So anyway, yes, I'm originally from northern Michigan. I moved to uh, Chicago in 2003. I had an offer to come uh, and do the work I do now full time. So I've been doing this since college. Uh, I went to school at Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I uh, had a great experience. I never in my life would have thought I'd be um, doing this for a living. My background is in secondary ed, speech and theater, which I'm sure is a shock so far. And um, I, I've done a lot of theater, wrote my own stuff. And before I came to Chicago, I worked in student affairs at North Central Michigan College. I was director of student activities and residence life and the adjunct theater and acting instructor. Loved the job. They did not like it when I left. Uh, they actually planted a tree on their campus when I left, which uh, I'm a very heartfelt guy. So when I pulled away in the U-Haul on the way to Chicago and looking out the rearview mirror, here's my little tree with <laughs> goodbye to me. So I, I know. You know. So anyway, I don't want to be rude, but I actually brought my family uh, with me today, and I'm very excited that they're here. Um, and this is a photo that was, this is white privilege, by the way, and I'll explain that. Um, I bet you can't tell by this photo who the gay boy is in this picture. Um, my mother, who was very beautiful, um, my, uh, my brother and I are both adopted, by the way. Uh, my mom, I remember this very well, I think I was like 9 or 10, but my mom, if those of you remember this, used to have a hair cutting device that had a razor in it, it was a comb, and it would drag through your child's hair, and it would actually tear the hair out and cut it. It sounds violent, but they sold these things probably, you know, in the back of a magazine. Well, my mom had that, that's 
why I had this weird, awful haircut. <laughs> and then she put this outfit on me, and I did not like it. And if you notice my mother's right hand here, her arm is behind my back. She's pinching my back fat because I did not like the outfit I was wearing. <laughs> Please notice that she's wearing something from Star Trek. <laughs> anyway, one thing I didn't tell you. My brother and I are both adopted. We're, and, and those of you that are in psychology here and sociology are going to absolutely love this. We're both adopted. You ready for this? The DePaul people are looking here. I'm, they're on the edge of their seat. <laughs> We're both adopted, both adopted from different families, and my parents won the homosexual lotto. They got two gay kids. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great thing. I didn't know my brother was gay until like, uh, I, really, I didn't know. I came out before he did, and I'm the outgoing one. He's the more quiet. And he said, well, I kind of want to get a feeler out before I said anything. <laughs> I was the kid on the rope going, you know, Carol Ann going to the light, and he was waiting on the He was, the, he was the, the small person, the lady going, you know, walking to the light. So um, it kind of saved our relationship because we literally killed and fought each other all the time when we were younger. And um, he's, uh, he's got a dry sense of humor, and I really appreciate that. It's a lot of fun. We need to tell our stories more. We need to look face to face and tell our story, who we are, because our stories. It changes hearts and minds. It changes policies. That's the only reason why things change. And hopefully we'll have a good change come November. I don't want to get political, but hopefully things are going to get up. Thank you very much. And it's our stories that bond us together, and it makes our differences not so different. And we find that we're alike in a lot of different ways. When we also do that, we find out what our legacy is. And our legacy is a beautiful thing. I found this out. Uh, several years ago, and I have to share this story with you. Uh, I'm good friends with the Shepherds, and I had Judy Shepherd when I worked at my college in Northern Michigan. Judy came and spoke. I was director of our lecture series. This is in 2000. That same year, I was at Central Michigan University, invited back to my alma mater, and they go, we'd like to have you come back and speak. Now, mind you, I had not been doing this very long part-time for part-time. I did the speech. So in 2001, Judy was at CMU, so a year after I was there. And uh, she said, I'd like to have you come and introduce me um, at your school. I thought, oh, it's honored. And she goes, and plus, Dennis won't be there, her husband, you can be my plus one, and come to the little soiree before. I'm like, oh, I'm all about, you know, a little notch before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she loved that. So I got there, had the notch, and then I went to introduce her in a water auditorium which holds about 2,000 people. Um, you know, there's a balcony and, you know, main floor. And when I got up, my friend Tim, who was with me uh, throughout school, was up in the balcony. Now, this is how I know I'm doing the right thing. Because um, I kind of hemmed and hawed about it. And mind you, I had a really great job at my school, at my college. And my agency at the time had made an offer to me, like, we're getting a lot of requests for you but you need to be near a major airport in Traverse City in Pelston, Michigan. <laughs> How's it cut? Yeah. If, you, if, if you've ever been to Pelston Airport, it's like Indiana Jones. You know, <laughs> you know, and you walk out and there's a gravel parking lot. They may have upgraded since then. but So I introduced her. I went up the balcony, and there were some students that had that big banner paper. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Am I dating myself here? Uh, they had this big roll of banner paper, and they all had signed it for her from a residence hall. And they go, can we, could you introduce us to Judy um, after a speech I go, I'd love to. So she did her own spiel. It was still early on, a couple of years after Matt had been killed. And she would weep during her court testament that she would read to the audience and then after the video. So I'm going down, filing out, and all these people are filing out. And I'm literally, if these seats were turned around the other way, I'm walking towards the stage with these students and Tim and the girl. <coughs> little red-haired girl, I'm calling little, she's a college student, was on the side, and she's called Greg, Greg, you know, and, and Tim goes, do you know that girl? I've never seen her before. She goes, Greg, and I go, she goes, okay. So I get up front, and I introduce the students to Judy, and then she comes around, she's totally exhausted. She, I mean, she's been maneuvering around all these people, and she was nervous. She goes, oh my God, I can't believe it's you. And I said, do I know you? And she goes, Yes, she goes, a year ago, I was at your lecture here. And I said, well, thanks for coming. And she goes, well, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> and I 
I said, <clears throat> I said, oh, and she goes, I just want to say thank you, you know, if I ever saw you again at your lecture program or out and about, I just want to say thank you for coming to my school. And I go, like, well, you're welcome. Well, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> and she said, here's my story. She goes, I came to your lecture. She goes, I hadn't planned on it. She goes, I was leaving the residence hall that same evening, and I saw your poster up. And she goes, my backpack was packed, and I left a note for my roommates because I was going to kill myself in either two locations that I left on a map on my desk in my dorm room. I still get a chill talking about this. And I, like all of the sound around me totally drowned me out. And I know Tim will cry in the spot. I couldn't look at him. I'm looking right at her. And she goes, I saw the poster. She goes, I was on my way out. And she goes, what do I have to lose? So she goes, I came to your lecture. I listened to what you had to say. I know you told everybody that was gay that was not out. This is when, you, when coming out was like a big story. Now college students are like, whatever. <laughs> and she said, I know you told us to come out when it was ready, but she goes, I was more than ready. And she goes, I left that program. The next day I drove home an hour. I told my parents that I'm gay, and she, I'm gay, and you know what? They love me just the same. And she goes, and a, and a girlfriend that I had that was abusing me, I told her to get lost. I was done. And she goes, I graduate in two months. And I always said, if I ever saw you again, I wanted to thank you for saving my life. I have never in my life had anybody vocalize and tell me that. And I know I motivated and mentored a lot of kids and teenagers, but I've never had anybody tell me that. And then, I, and Tim was a mess, he was like, <laughs> you know, puddle on the floor, and I was a mess, and I hugged her, and he would kiss on the cheek, I go, thank you so much, and I said, I'll never forget you, and she did this little boop boop, and off she ran, and I was, <laughs> never saw her again. <laughs> and pardon my language, but Tim grabbed my hand, and he said, if that doesn't tell you what you should be doing for the rest of your life, you're a dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> Here I am. So that's my legacy. So I hope while we're talking today, and um, I'm sharing some things with you, I hope you kind of think in your head, what is your legacy going to be? And what kind of community do you want to live in? We're such disconnected people now, and it's a universal thing that's going on in our communities. And we need to make it better. And when you can find your community and find out what's going on, and be that force, and be that positive force, this all comes into play. I think it's also important that we talk about our history that we've had of hate, and we need to make sure that our history never repeats itself and never happens again. But it's also important that we're educating ourselves and educating our young people about when hate played a factor in our history of the United States, but also the world. These are some signs, of course, that were from long ago, and unfortunately, some of those signs are still presenting themselves to us. Do not go to a hate rally. It's not inclusive anything. They love that you show up. Go to a peace rally, and make sure the local media knows that it's just important to go to a peace rally than to focus on this. A lot of the times, the media and the publishers will all come to a hate rally and show the bad stuff, but we need to start showing the good stuff. Being here, I'll take any questions that you've done here. I appreciate you being here. Remember, our children and all of our community are precious and our national treasure. It's not our stuff. It's not our cell phones. Not our computers. Not our videos. Our national treasure is all of us and our children and the people that we're influencing and making a positive world in our lives. So those that have to leave, you're welcome to, and otherwise some more break time. <laughs>